Hmm, there's so many charging options out there, but which one will boost my battery the quickest? The unifying truth, whether you have an Android device or an Apple device, a smartphone or a tablet, is this. The sophistication of these products often means you've got one eye on the battery meter, and sometimes you have a very short window in which to charge your device. Now, as you can see, there are plenty of ways to charge your digital daily driver. But for the average consumer, like myself, is there an optimum way to charge your battery? Well, I decided to put that question to the unscientific test. My Nexus 6 with its 3200 milliamp battery against various charging options. And the first one is a standard generic USB charging plug and cable plugged into the mains. You can call this my control test. And before I do each future test, we'll check the percentage of the battery on the Nexus 6 and then plug it in and run it for 30 minutes. As the battery currently stands, it's down to 9%. And this is where I mean these tests are not going to be exact. Batteries may charge faster the more they are depleted but I'm not going to let the battery run down for 9% for every test because I have a life I want to live, and much as you do in the real world. Anyway, the charge has started, so we shall fast forward and see what the percentage is after 30 minutes of a battery charging. Isn't it a good job that I can edit this post-filming, or this will be the digital equivalent of watching paint dry? Anyway, there is your first result. Battery charge is now at 33%, which is a charge of 24%. And just remember, your device may have a smaller or bigger battery, which will affect the numbers. It's the comparisons we're interested in, and this is going to be our first comparison. With the battery at 32%, I'm going to start playing a YouTube video, so the screen, speakers and Wi-Fi are all in use. Will this slow down the battery charging, and by how much? Hello, and welcome to my basics series of bite-sized hints and tips for your Samsung Galaxy S4 and Android phones in general. We start the series with swiping down from the top of your phone to display settings and... When a video is played... Ah yes, any chance to crowbar my other videos into a test and I will take it. I am a shameless self-promoter. Okay, the battery charge this time is 51% which is a 19% increase in the battery, 5% lower than the control test. Or put another way, using your phone while it's charging can reduce its effectiveness by up to 20%. But what about the other end of the spectrum? How about not using your phone at all to the point of actually turning it off? Surely if a battery isn't being used at all, it will charge even faster. Well, since I asked myself, I might as well try. The battery is at 52%, so off goes the smartphone and in goes the charger. Obviously, this method of charging does have some pitfalls, of course. Namely, that you can't use your device, and then when you finish charging, you have to wait for it to boot up again, which in the case of the Nexus 6 is a ridiculous 80 seconds or more. And in this test, at least, the benefit appears to be non-existent. The battery is at 75%, which is a 23% increase, a fraction less than our control test. Now it could be that the act of booting up a device is quite battery intensive, or that the battery level isn't quite calibrated correctly the moment you switch it on. But it seems like turning off your phone to charge has many drawbacks and little incentives. So beyond using a normal plug, what else can you try to affect your battery charge? Well, there are various accessories out there, and a popular one these days is the multi-USB charging plug socket that will include higher amp charging ports. In this example, we have a 2.4 amp socket, and that's what I'm going to try in this test. Incidentally, if you weren't looking closely earlier on, the generic plug charged at 1.5 amps. Battery is at 45% in this test, so let's crack on and see what the figures come up with at the end of 30 minutes of charging. And again, we have another somewhat of a surprising result with the battery up to 66%, an increase of 21%. So the control test still reigns supreme, and the main difference there was that the battery was very low to begin with. Up until now, we've relied on tests that depend on plugging the charger into the mains, but with a portable device, that's not always possible. So portable battery chargers are very important if you are on the move. And much like multi-USB wall chargers, they often include different amps of charge. 
We'll start with the one amp socket first and see what juice we can extract from the portable battery in 30 minutes. A nice round at 66% this time, so away we go with another charge. And in this test, we get quite a predictable result. It's the lowest amp so far, which gives us a charge of just 19%. So it does seem clear that different USB amps do affect capacity to draw power. Or it could be that a portable battery charger is less efficient. Let's try two amps and see if this becomes any clearer. Starting off at 42% this time, we reach 63% which is 21% or 10% faster than the one amp battery charge, but still around 20% slower than the control test. Phew, all these numbers are getting a little confusing. And I'm going to complicate things even further now because not only can you have portable chargers, but wireless portable chargers. No wires involved in this one, simply witchcraft of a kind I don't understand, but I am willing to test. Now, I imagine with no direct connections involved, there's likely to be some loss of power during the transfer. And I am right. From 63% to just 76%. That's almost 50% slower than charging from the mains. Well, at least we have one definitive answer. If you need to charge your device in a hurry, use wireless charging as a last resort. As I have said earlier, this test hasn't exactly been scientific. I've used an assortment of chargers, each of which could be of varying quality, which can drastically affect charge time. There is one thing I can try, however, which may have a significant impact on charge, and that's to use the battery charger plug that comes with the Nexus 6. You might call this a party trick that's exclusive to one or two newer devices that have turbocharging support. Well, it's got the right name I'm looking for in this test, so let's give it a whirl. The battery percentage is at 41% and I'm going to charge the device for the usual 30 minutes. The layout on my table is a little different because the cable doesn't have quite as long a reach in this example, but it shouldn't impact what you can see. And what we do eventually see is something a little disappointing. 22% increase. That's worse than my original control test. This doesn't make any sense. But then I thought back to the layout of the table. The charging cable only just fit on my table and even that was the longest cable I had. So the thought occurred to me, does the charging cable you use also affect the speed at which your device charges? Well, let's repeat the turbo charge test and find out. I mean, less auspicious surroundings now, but at least I have the original charging cable that came with an Nexus 6 and can reach. Battery percentage is at 42%. Let's give this one another shot. Just to remind ourselves then, the original control test remains the best charge rate at 24% in 30 minutes. But this result, as I expected in the first instance, crushes all before it. 80%. A 38% charge, that's more than a third of the battery in just 30 minutes. And if you check Motorola's website, it states that turbocharging is only effective up to 80% of the battery's charge. Now, rather frustratingly, this does present a great big gaping hole in my test that I've conducted over the last few days. Only on my final test did I consider that the USB charging cable I'm using might have an effect on charging speed as well as everything else. So you're going to want me to do all these tests again, aren't you? Bugger. Back to the control test I go then with the generic charging plug combined with a Nexus 6 USB charging cable. The end result was 16% up to 41%, a charge rate of 25%, which was only a percentage higher than my original test. I also used the 2 amp socket on the portable charger and got a 21% charge out of that which was identical to the first test. So maybe I jumped the gun a little bit with how important the USB cable actually is. But the general rule makes sense, use USB cables that come with devices rather than cheap replacements whenever you can. And that folks is my 10 minute take on the fastest way to charge your mobile phone, with the too long didn't watch notes being. Wireless charging is the slowest form of charging. Turning off your phone seems to have little to no impact on charge time. Chargers plugged into the mains appear to be faster than portable counterparts. And if your device has turbo charging, take advantage of it. I would be delighted to open up this debate to you guys and gals. For the average user, does this clarify things? And for the more committed battery charging enthusiast, how can we further improve on what's shown here? 
get involved and post your own opinions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.